What's up, everybody? This is Ralph Amsden, co-host of the Seatown Rivals podcast. We're about to be joined by Brett Quintine and Chili to talk about last week's action in Chandler area football. But before I do that, just a reminder that the Seatown Rivals podcast is brought to you by ArizonaVarsity.com, the Rivals affiliate site covering all Arizona high school football and basketball in the state of Arizona. You can support us by becoming a subscriber. Just jump on to ArizonaVarsity.com, and if you're not already a subscriber, uh, go ahead and subscribe. It costs about $8.33 a month to support all that we do. Subscribing to Arizona Varsity helps us bring you content just like what you're about to listen to. We are also part of the ArizonaSportsCast.com podcast network. ArizonaSportsCast.com hosts podcasts covering Chandler area football, like you're about to listen to with the Seatown Rivals podcast, as well as high school sports from around the state, the Arizona State Sun Devils, the Phoenix Suns, and Arizona Cardinals. So if you could go ahead and search for Arizona Sportscast on iTunes, become a subscriber, leave a review, that would be fantastic. Without further ado, let's get you to this week's episode of the Seatown Rivals podcast. season, the number of unbeaten start to fall. A couple of the big schools are still perfect, and the small school football here in the Chandler area continues to impress. Let's dive in. As always, I'm joined by my guys Ralph Amson and Chili, and we talk solid football across the board at the 3, 4, 5, and 6A levels. Let's start off with the Arizona College Prep Knights. They improved to 5-1 and one on the year as they blow past Tank Verde 48-6 down in Tucson. Mark Chavez had touchdown, had a couple of touchdown passes, but I'll tell you, Ralph, this team features a running back who is putting up all types of numbers. Richard Williams with over 200 yards and a pair of scores. Let's also notice a bit of depth with this team. It used to be all about Brian Dyson, but now even a sophomore stepping up, Bryce Chen with 121 receiving yards. It's kind of a surprise to me. I mean, to to have a sophomore with 120 receiving yards at that level of football, and we might have to get out there and watch these guys play. They've been uh, rolling lately. Mm-hmm. Um, I, it, it almost makes you wonder if, if this is a team that can maybe compete to, to win a playoff game or two. Yep. Uh, that would be... I mean, I, I was expecting them to take a step forward this year, but this is an enormous step. Yeah. Like, the, this is... I mean, they the, might be looking at a home game in the 3A playoffs, yeah. possibly. This is a special season. What is a home game for them in the playoffs? Like, yeah. what, where would they play? That is a great question, because they you figure they split the their home games between Hamilton, Basha, Perry, and the CUSD has helped them out. Yeah. So whatever field would be available, and I'm hoping one of them... Maybe Austin would, Field to get a fifth game... Yeah, that's you know, yeah, that's uh, because if Chandler qualifies for the Open, which they probably will, yes, um, they get that week off that, anyway. Correct. So more than likely, I would say a home game would be at Austin, which would be their closest uh, in proximity to where ACP is. Wow, I mean, it's amazing that we're even talking about this. <laughs> yes, so. yes, indeed. Man, the thing that impresses me the most about uh, the team is uh, Blues Crew is serious. Um, but I like that. I, 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 Blues I, Crew, I, I like, like that. Okay, I, I, I like Mario Duncan. Um, He's got like five sacks from his uh, listed defensive back position, so it kind of uh, makes me feel like they got that like blitzing like 46 thing going on. Um, I, I'd love to go out there and check out a game. Hopefully, uh, hopefully they can schedule a game on like a Saturday or something like that. So you know, uh, change things up a little bit, maybe get in there for a playoff game or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I'd at least like to go out and check them out for like a half. Sure. I just have to know where they're going to be at. But right, yeah. Um, <laughs> The the team is the team is definitely rolling five and one. You can you can see how the progression has been made over the years, and you know it's just nice to see the continuity over there. Absolutely, well deserved off week for and I like the name Blues Cruz. That's the Blues Blues Cruz. Yeah, Blue Guys. I guess we'll call them the Blue Crew yes. or something. Yeah, now Myron is definitely getting it done. Uh, off week for them before three straight road games for the Knights, and let's see if they can continue getting it done. The Valley Christian Trojans, they fall for the first time this year as they were un- as they were defeated by the Northwest Christian Crusaders 17 to 10. 
Chile, you can't win them all, and this was an extremely hard-fought battle. Northwest Christian, after all, they are the defending 3A state champs. And, you know, it's all, it's always tough to defeat a champion. I think uh, that that's part of the learning process. And, you know, Kirk, uh, Coach Sundberg definitely has uh, this team going in the right direction. Um, it was a fight. It was a fight, and really that's all you can ask, especially against a tough Northwest Christian team. Any of these top teams in uh, – in the 3A, you know, like that, that's what you want to see. That's the type mm -hmm. of game you want to see. You don't want to, you don't want to get ran out of the building. And, um, you know, I think, uh, Sundberg's going to take a lot from this. It was, it was only 17 to 10. This is, isn't something that, you know, that they're not going to be able to rebound from and Correct. get back later in the playoffs because most likely they will probably see a Northwest Christian team or a Northwest Christian like team in the playoffs. Plus, that's a long ways to go. Like, because they they were they were on the road for that game, and you know mm -hmm. sometimes like you know you get a little comfort being at home because they were at home for what like uh, three straight. Or yeah, something they like had, that. yeah, so, they had yeah, they had some cooking. I think uh, you know you get on the road. It's you know now they get to welcome Yuma Catholic in. Yes, and we we get to see how they're going to rebound against you know a top level team. I know Yuma Catholic is kind of reeling, but mm -hmm. you know they are still YC. So. You know, we'll see what happens. Indeed. Up next is that Yuma Catholic Shamrock team, two and three. And they've actually been blown out when they played some top-notch competition. And I think we consider Kirk Sundberg's four and one team top-notch. They're going to have to take advantage of this and get a win. You can't you can't go 0-2 against Northwest Christian and Yuma Catholic in a year where both teams are down. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to be able to go in and, and, and prove that you can do at least one of the two. Um, home field would be a great opportunity for... Valley Christian to show um, that that they can get something done here. I'm thinking about leaning towards stopping by this game. Okay. Um, uh, you know, e even for a little bit, I just you know I want I want to see what this team uh, looks like in its current iteration. And uh, you know, the last time I saw Yuma Catholic, it was when they were losing in triple overtime in the three A uh, final final. And so I'm, yeah, I'm very curious to see kind of what's going on with that team and why they've taken a step back. If Valley Christian could. Deal, Yuma Catholic, a, their fourth loss w would be kind of maybe a death yeah, blow in the three A. I mean, but also create a very dangerous situation to where maybe you have a four or five loss Yuma Catholic team making its way into a 13 14 seed in the playoffs. You that know, is not a team you'd want to see. No, in the first round. Season, not That's at true. all. I mean, unless you're uh, ALA Queen Creek, I, I, I don't think that you're worried true. if you're them. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, I think that this is. It's it's weird to to look at a game, uh, you know, where you're four and one and a two and three opponent is coming to visit you as a must win. But yeah. I, after, I, I always thought that the, the worst possible thing that could happen for them after having a promising start would be to to go zero and two in in the two week uh, mm -hmm. span that they had Northwest Christian and Yuma sure. Catholic. So to me, it's a must win. I know. I definitely agree. So we'll say go Trojans. The Seton Catholic Sentinels, they're now 4-1 and one as well. What a game they played and what a comeback. Dominic Costantino hits a 40-yard field goal as time expired. That completes a 41-39 comeback victory over the Mesquite Wildcats. Chili, we talk about young Mikey Castro getting it done as a running back, but he sparked the big comeback as a defensive back. Yeah, you know they picked off uh, they picked off Ty Thompson three times. That's super impressive. Being uh, that Ty Thompson is probably one of the best quarterbacks in the state. Um, you know, Mikey Castro didn't do it on offense this week. Uh, I think he was uh, bottled up, kind of uh, twenty five yards rushing or something like that. Um, but it was nice to see Hansel step up. Hansel yep. almost had a hundred yards receiving. Um, you know, your star player isn't always going to go off unless his name is Bajon Robinson. So. Um, <laughs> You know, this is just one of those situations where you have to learn to find ways to win. Um, sometimes your star player is going to struggle or whatever is going to happen is going to happen and somebody has to step up. For now, on offense, it was Josh Hansel. Uh, Lalakata had a decent game uh, through mm -hmm. for uh, like a buck 75 or something like that. Um, actually had a higher quarterback rating from what I saw than Ty Thompson. So right, very not, true. Not, not, not to mislead anything, but, right, you right. know, he did, do, he did do his job. Um, didn't give the ball up. I think he only had one interception. So, um, you know, that Mesquite team, they're tough. Um, I watched them I watched them roll Gilbert. I watched mm -hmm. them play up and roll Gilbert. And, you know, th this, is a, this is a good victory. This is a very, very big victory for Seton. I'm super happy for them, super excited for them. I went to the game. 
Um, okay. Stayed for a quarter, left when Seton Catholic was down 12 nothing. Made a brief stop back by when they had, they had a lead around halftime. So they must have had a really big second quarter. Yes. Um, this, is a, this is a big game for Seton in that I think what would have had to happen is just extreme coaching adjustments. Mm-hmm. Um, because Ty Thompson was definitely the best player on the field, and he – had some receivers who just had a case of the drops in that first quarter. Otherwise, it would have got ugly real quick. But um, one of the things that I noticed right away was like, wow, they're really living on these like short um, slant routes and stuff okay. like that. And, and you got Hansel on the outside, who's six foot five and long. You know, maybe put him a little bit over over the middle sure. and use his length to kind of interrupt some of what. Uh, you know, that was just a thought that was going through my head. And then all of a sudden, Hansel has a, a pass batted nice. down, and those little slants aren't working. And so we already started to see, Alex Simpson and I already started to see some of those adjustments in place. Uh, but just the fortitude of Seton to stay in this game when they were playing a little bit slower than Mesquite early on. Uh, and uh, Chris Hincy had two touchdowns in 10 seconds against them, which can be really demoralizing. Ooh, wow. He had a long touchdown run, and then two plays later, he took a pick six to the house to make it 12 nothing. Then you get a couple of moral victories in keeping them from, you scoring know, scoring again, an extra yeah. point. Um, and then yeah, okay. Chris Hinty uh, almost took a punt return back right after that. He almost had three touchdowns in the span of a minute. Nice. They stop him on that punt return. They end up forcing a, a turnover on downs. And then, uh, you know, eventually the offense had to get going. That wasn't what I saw when I was there. They had no points when I left. And so um, Dom Costantino is a really good kicker. I want to give credit to him. I mean, the English he can put on a, on a kickoff is, you know, there's not a lot of guys who can do what he did. That's Obviously awesome. kicks a game-winning field goal. So he definitely deserves a shout-out. Um, the other thing is Mikey Castro. Uh, I, I talked to Matt Mayo, the athletic director out there. I talked to a couple other people. I said, is it fair to compare him to Antonio Campanella? And it was like, well, yeah, well, you know, Campanella was what he was, which mm-hmm. is an absolute warrior. Sure. But maybe eventually. And the one thing that I noticed about uh, Castro is he's just very slippery. Uh, if you look, I put up a picture uh, on our Seatown Rivals Instagram of Mikey Castro with, like, Eight mesquite defenders all crashing oh, down wow. on him. He, I mean, he had he had a four yard kick return where he was on his feet for about twenty two seconds. Wow. Think about that in football that, time, right? That, yeah, like, it, you carrying some weight, yeah. you churning those legs, and he's just sliding in and out of tackles, letting guys miss. Um, it just seems the like piles they, moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's he. It really, really feels like time kind of slows down when he when he wow. has the ball. So. Um, I think he's going to be a really impressive player and has a great future out there. Uh, I'm look forward to watching some film on this game because I, I just, after being there for the first quarter, it's hard to wrap my mind around Seton dominating offensively for the rest of the game the way they did. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's one thing when we see these Sentinels beat up on, let's say, Coombs or uh, Mingus, but a win against Mesquite, which has a sizable population, and obviously, like Chile said, one of the best quarterbacks in the state, for them to have that comeback victory, that's really solid. So at 4-1, and one, it's uh, definitely good to see. They head over to uh, Tempe next week on Friday to face Marcos Deniza. The Padres are 3-2 and two on the year. The Castile Colts, they hung up a... The, wow, excuse me. <laughs> totally, we might have to edit that. The Castile Colts, they fall to the Williams Field Blackhawks by a score of 42-27. to 27. And for Castile, I think in this case, obviously, they opened up region play. They were just defeated by a better team. There wasn't really any given aspect in which... I would say they won the game. Yes, Dane, uh, excuse me, Dane Christensen, he came to play, but Mason Bug was a little bit better. The running game for the Blackhawks, just a little bit better. Overall, I mean, we know the Castile Colts are very, very competitive, but so is that Santan region. Man, uh, I saw I was following your tweets, uh, my man, at Brett and AZ, and um, I saw Colin Gapen got hurt early. Yes, yes, um, and that, that hurt, that, yes. I mean, that that is a special playmaker that I was talking about last week, and um, for him to get hurt early, not that he carries the team by himself, but, but it's a weapon. you know he he springs some things, he opens up some plays, and you know he creates some opportunities. It's not that he's gonna break an 85 yard touchdown. He might, but he's gonna break that 47 yard play that leads to somebody else's you know 
22 yard touchdown, Very 7 yard touchdown. Player. So um, he's super valuable in that way. So um, to lose him early, I can't imagine, you know, what they had to do to try to retool the offense, to try to find somebody new to, you know, open open up those opportunities. I mean, it's tough right now. Burns um, had a nice game. I know. Well, receiver, yeah. And I know that there's a weird vibe surrounding the game based on the Noah Nelson thing. So, like, I, I know Williams Field was really playing with his, like, extra chip on their mm -hmm. shoulder as if they need that in region play since right. they haven't <laughs> lost in, like, five years. So, yeah. I mean, you know, it's just one of those things, and it's the, the timing of everything – you know, just couldn't be more unfortunate for Castile. And, you know, I know I know Coach Newcomb's in a rebound. He's going to get these guys back together. Mm -hmm. and, hey, guys, this is what region play looks like. This isn't Verado. This isn't, right. this isn't all these other schools that, you know, we're used to, you know, piling points up on. Like, we got to get back to how we were versus Centennial. Like, mm -hmm. because the bar is now set. They played that close game with Centennial. Right. And then now they got blown out by Williamsfield. There's a lot of whispers out there like, hey, wait, maybe Williamsfield's the better team here. Right. So. It's yeah, so I, I'll definitely say that Santin region, I mean, between Gilbert and obviously Higley is starting to come on. So, yeah, Castile has their work cut out for them, but they've already been challenged, like you mentioned, against Centennial. So, I mean, I think they'll be okay as they navigate the waters. Do you think Castile's having some identity issues? I do a little bit, yes. Yeah. I will, uh, or you do think you you have some identity issues out at Castile? It was, it was interesting. It was, uh, so I'll, I'll just say the administration felt that I was somebody different. They thought that I was Bruce Cooper, which was kind of, uh, it, it was, it was you awkward. gotta, you gotta tell children the story. Yes, I, I'll definitely, yes, I'm gonna elaborate. We've got the, the <laughs> mic open and the whole nine yards, so, so I get out there, my normal time, 10 to 15 minutes before kickoff, standing in my little perch, and, uh, the AD, he, Comes over, hey, how you doing, Bruce? Hey, what's up? This and that, blah, blah. <laughs> and so I've been called a lot of things, so I thought nothing of it. And I was like, hey, it's my first time here this year. Last time I was here was... And then so we kind of slid the conversation over to the principal. He's like... Oh. So you overlooked it completely. I, I, yeah, I'm like, oh, okay. it is... You did him a solid. Okay. Right. So then, oh, hey, do you know Bruce Cooper? And this is the AD and the principal speaking. This is the second time. Right, and I'm like... <laughs> So then he's like, of course I know Bruce Cooper. I grew up in the Valley. I'm like, I'm not Bruce Cooper, and I show my AD Preps 365 badge. And they give you that look like, are you C sure you're not Bruce Cooper? It, and I mean, it was a very awkward scenario. I was like, <laughs> I was here for your last game last year against Higley. I was here for the opener against Centennial. I go a long ways back with Spencer Stowers. Dr. Lundberg, I was a Wait, so you're justifying now that you are not Bruce Cooper. Absolutely. Like, and, <laughs> yes. Like, they didn't believe you. They and thought you were very, It was very... It sure was an awkward, awkward scenario, and then we all just kind of went on about our business, and I continued to cover the game. So it was just... It was weird, because... I mean... I, I feel that... There's so many things I want to say right now. You can feel free no, to say I'm, them. It was just... <laughs> It was odd, no, I because I, I guess my scenario is, in the high school realm, we all should kind of know who we are, and it's not even so much by first name, it's like, if you see the guy with the camera in his hand, oh hey, that that's the team. That doesn't mean I'm Cam Cox. That's the, no, no, I'm, I'm even talking about still pictures, that's, that's the team's photographer, or, oh hey, I'll be the first to say, I... Didn't know Zach's first name all the time, Zach Elvira, the outstanding writer. Yeah. Yeah. But I knew he's a writer. I, I didn't mistake him for anyone else. So it was, it was a little bit different in that I've been out covering the school for years, and I was called full name by someone else. No, no disrespect, but I just feel like Bruce Cooper is kind of like the goat of what we all try oh, to absolutely. do and aspire to be. If you are going to mistake somebody for somebody, do not mistake somebody for Bruce Cooper. I, I agree. Um, well, here's the other thing that I was kind of kidding about. Like, don't say I, you grew up in the Valley. Of course you know who Bruce Cooper is. When, <laughs> right. yeah, that, yeah, that's the worst part <laughs> right. of it. Yeah. Oh, well, of course I know Bruce. And then I guess here's the thing. I'm a lot of things, and obviously I'm older than both of you guys, but yeah. I don't look like a 60-year-old man. And right. Bruce is cl closer to 60 than I am. And I'm, I'm not quite there. So I, I just feel it was, <laughs> it was, a, and, and I'm a fan of Bruce Cooper, but I, I just, it was, it yeah, was a different thing that he keeps himself in shape. He, he does, does, but. He, just he, like, you know, not like yourself, you know, I know you go to Lifetime and stuff like that, yeah. shameless plug, so. There we go. Um, but, uh, it, it was different. It was, um, it, it was, it was different, but, uh, 
go Colts and what do you think? Do you, do you think Williams Field was just sort of energized by all the stuff that was going on, or do you think they were just the better? Team, clearly, the better. Just team? in talking with Steve Campbell after the game, I, I they didn't really use that as a motivate. It was a next man up philosophy. They well, like, they, they didn't even have time to use that as motivation. They just found out like that yeah, day, you, that morning, yeah, or earlier. Like that. Yeah, so it was. I think they're the better team. I, I just think that. From top to bottom, if these two teams were to meet again, with or without Noah, I think we'd probably have that same one-loss result. Man, the, hey, that situation with Noah, bless that kid. Cause yeah, so hopefully things fun. kind of, uh, things happen and we'll, uh, yes, we we like Noah Nelson. He's certainly a solid guy. The Basher Bears, they dropped to 4-2 and two on the season after being defeated by the Red Mountain Mountain Lions 47-21. Competitive game up until the fourth quarter until the Mountain Lions scored 19 unanswered for the victory. It was Cannon Clark behind center for Chris McDonald's club, and he responds with a pair of TD passes both to your boy Zion Williams. He had 159 yards receiving, Chili. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I, re- I really got to say that I'm kind of surprised uh uh, at the quarterback situation because uh, that's that's not really what I expected having seen um, Mike I think it was, uh, well I heard about Michael Harper's mm-hmm. uh, moment yep. um, but uh, having seen uh, Clinton I think it was Bryce Clinton uh, yes. take snaps versus La Jolla yes. mm-hmm. so um, I was a little bit surprised that uh, you know uh, Clanton didn't get an opportunity to come back, but you know whatever the decision is, the decision is. Um, Cannon Clark played a very good game, almost had 250 yards passing, mm-hmm. like you said, the two touchdowns. Um, and I kind of knew that Michael Harper was uh, a, a short-term experiment. Um, it, it's too much to ask of any, you know, mm-hmm. your best athlete to go do this in the 6A. So um, you know, I'm curious to see, you know, what a uh, what happens the rest of the way? It looks like Cannon Clark might be a permanent solution. I mean, Red Mountain is a tough team, and you know to be able to put up 250 and two touchdowns like that's no easy task. So I mean, this might this might be enough to get them through the rest of the region. Maybe squeeze out two more victories. Maybe you know at least one more. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll definitely have to see it. I mean, we'll go definitely in depth with the uh, the Premier Division very shortly. But yeah, overall the Bears at four and two. And they have an off week before they do begin that very, very tough region play. The Perry Pumas, they rebound after the loss last week and outscore the Boulder Creek Jaguars 59-43. The Pumas got on top early 21-0 and never looked back. Chubba Purdy, 304 yards in the air with five touchdown passes, 104 yards on the ground, and a rushing TD. He hit a couple of receivers nicely, Ralph, with Jordan Young snagging 10 catches for 124 yards and two scores. Bryce Holridge, five catches, 108 yards, two scores. Good to see the offense get back in track. Yeah, I mean, they they had a pretty decent week anyway um, in a loss. Uh, but, yeah, I think that as long as Chubba Purdy is able to distribute the ball to everybody, because I think we've talked a couple of times on this that there's not really that feature mm-hmm. star offensive player, um, either at the running back or, or receiver, receiver position, uh, which most other teams at the top mm-hmm. level have. Yes. Um, and we'll definitely get into that you know, very shortly when we yeah, break down the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's one of the things that kind of creates a worry for me because um, – High school football, has, especially in Arizona, has become all about the like great quarterbacks who go on to do great things. And, and you know, we, I spent my Saturday watching uh, Bryce Perkins and mm-hmm. you know and Brock Purdy. That's sure. Uh, you that, know, the cool. qu- quarterbacks are, are are getting ridiculous. The ones that are coming out of Arizona, um, but it's still high school football, and a good quarterback isn't enough. Correct. Like. In fact, it's the teams that have the other surrounding uh, town. Yeah, that that can beat you to death like by running the ball mm-hmm. or or strongest on the offensive and defensive lines that are always the most dangerous. It's why Centennial has had a dynasty. It's why Saguaro has won six straight championships without sending any quarterbacks, quarterbacks to the, the power That's five true. level. That's true. You know, they send quarterbacks yeah. on but not not to the no. power not to the power right. five. You know, it's why Hamilton dominated for as long as they did with senior quarterbacks who went on to play at like Division two or FCS level football. Um, so if at you, all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you can't – high school football is still high school football in that you really don't go out there and win with a quarterback as your best player. You can finish a strong second 
you know, like mm-hmm. Daniel Bridge Gad right. and, uh, and Paradise Valley did against a Desert Edge team that was just bigger and meaner. Sure. You know, but it, it's very, very rare that we see a quarterback take you all the way to the promised land. And that's kind of what Perry has mm-hmm. been looking to do the last couple of years. But they may have taken a, even a step back at the skill position level from last year to this year. So when you see Chuba distributing the ball all over the field, it's just giving a lot of people more opportunities to kind of break out and get comfortable and establish themselves. And you're going to need multiple weapons. Absolutely. Um, the one thing that we always saw from, you know, when Chandler would go to the championship uh, every single year, we always make the joke of like, all right, who is it that, that that's going to mm, break right. out? Because they had a championship that they won where Micah Reed Campos was the star. Correct. They and had a championship the, where the Taj... The tight uh, Oh, well, Taj DeCarrier. Yeah. Um, I forget the tight end's name. I thought he was number... Well, he wasn't number 10. Uh, in the where they beat Mountain Point, he stepped up and had two TDs. And then the next year, it was a live rock? Are you talking about? No, oh. it was another... Wow, I can't... This, Bald and Agro or... Sh- I'm, yeah, I'm gonna have to dig up that. Rock. Oh, Jerick, Jerick Caldwell. That's yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Yes. no, 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 that yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah every guy. Right, but yeah, yes. and and even then, Braden Lybrock didn't break out to the playoffs in exactly. his junior year. So, right. you know, that that could be the case for Perry. It could be that somebody mm-hmm. needs to develop through the season, sure. to step up and absolutely, um, and be that help. So, yeah, I mean, I, I always like to see that the ball's getting all over the place, and because you know, when I look at that team, I think uh, Jordan Young's the weapon, but you want. Everybody yes. to be involved. Absolutely. And so let's, I, I, let's, we'll dive into the premier region a little bit. Later. I want to get your thoughts on Hamilton. Perfect 6 and 0. They blast the Dobson Mustangs 63 to 7. What I like, something you like that running game. Sebastian Dorman, Gabe Armenta, they found the end zone. But it was the defense and special teams that dominated in this game. Pick six, fumble return, and punt return by your freshman, Cole Martin. Hey, Cole Martin is an absolute monster. As a class of 2023, uh, you know, freshman on varsity, he is so amazing and dynamic in the way that, you know, he plays on defense. He covers space better than um, any freshman corner that I can remember on the varsity level. Um, I I think he's absolutely amazing and fun to watch, and he's got a spirit about him um, on and off the field Mm -hmm. that is absolutely, like, embracing and um you can see like the his teammates around him like how they just gravitate to him and they they just i mean you always hope that your teammates want you to be great but we live in the social media generation of where it's i want you to be great but look at me do this mm-hmm. i'm the guy so like yeah. um i don't get that vibe at all i think that cole martin is the not the glue but i kind of think like he's the glue that like really keeps this team That's good. together like uh, spiritually to like um it's just amazing to watch like how all these seniors like take to him and you know before or after during the game and everybody's hopeful like and i mean like i said you hope that your teammates are like that but we live in this new generation where sometimes they aren't very true and then last but not least the Chandler wolves back to back to back state championships they beat up on desert ridge 52 to 14 they extend their winning streak to 18 games. Day Day Hunter, 138 rushing yards, three TDs. Mikey Keene, 21 of 25. And Ralph, we were just talking about spreading the ball around. Keene found eight different receivers. Yeah, uh, I I also was at this, I was at a bunch of games. Yeah, I went you got I, around. Man. I went and took some pictures of Hamilton pregame. They looked really good. Uh, here's a little aside from that Hamilton game that I absolutely love. Um, Fred Dupree was the first principal of Hamilton High School. He was there in 1998, which would have been my freshman year of high school. My parents made me go to Chandler, even though I wanted to go to Hamilton. Um, All my friends went to Hamilton. I went to Chandler kind of by myself. Uh, My parents' justification for that was you miss the bus too much. And so you're going to go to the school that it takes less time to walk to because we're not driving. That's either. funny. Uh, and so I was like three miles from Chandler, 3.5 from Hamilton or something. Okay. Like that. Oh, well. So that whole decision was made based on my irresponsibility <laughs> in junior high of missing the bus too often. Um, but Fred Dupree was the principal of Hamilton. And my best friends were all at Hamilton at the time. They loved him. Um, he was the principal, I think, up till like maybe like 2015 or something like that. Uh, and then moved, retired, moved to California. And I'm out on the field talking with head coach Mike Zadebski, and he tells me, like, do you know who, you know, do you remember Dr. Dupree? And I said, of course. And uh, he said, his son is starting on the offensive line for us tonight. 
Oh, wow. His son would have been maybe not born yet wow. at the time. Yeah. That, Interesting. Uh, when I first had heard of Dr. Dupree, he'd wow. come and spoke at our junior high or whatever. That's funny. Um, okay. And so, and like, and so they had like an injury or a sickness or something like that on the offensive line. And uh, Dr. Dupree's son was the backup. So, That's I mean, it awesome. just. It, and, man up in effect. Yeah. And then the cool thing is then I got to go to Chandler High afterward where Terry Williams, the principal who. Uh, was the principal before Rother and who became principal my sophomore year at Chandler High School all the way up through it just a few years ago when Larry Rother took over and I got to tell him like hey Dr. Dupree's son got to That's start very cool for stuff. Hamilton and he he was just absolutely like thrilled with that news and so um, it's just a, it was a really cool thing that made me feel super old not Bruce Cooper old but <laughs> no, one, no one called me Bruce out at Chandler um, <laughs> that, that, that'd be really crazy yeah that would yeah. be pretty funny uh, but yeah so um but the Chandler game, it was it was uh, twenty eight to seven or something like that when we got there twenty eight seven okay. twenty ten, uh, and uh, Chandler really broke out in the in the third quarter. They kicked a field goal, then Gunnar Maldonado returned a punt, a fifty eight yard punt return for a touchdown, where he went also sideline to sideline. It, I mean, it was really special to watch. Uh, and then the backups just went in there and, and, and finished Desert Ridge off. Um, Chandler's pass rush right now is absolutely ridiculous. Just ridiculous. They got Brandon Buckner back and mm-hmm. him paired with Jeremiah Tyler. Sure. Um, it's a lot to deal with. And I mean, that's not all they have on the defensive line. It's not even close. Um, but it, their pass rush is absurd. The Mikey Keene looked good. I mean, and again, I'm going to have to keep apologizing to Mikey Keene. Or I'll just say, you know, good job answering the question that I sure. no, posed of, you know, can Mikey Keene, um, you know, uh, hold, the, hold the yeah, throne, right? he is. Uh, and he, he has been. But that defensive line right now, to me, is the strength of this whole team. And, and they played a very special ball game against Desert Ridge. And so as we start to talk about this premier region, and let's stay on Chandler because it's fair to say that they are the creme de la creme at least on paper, so to speak, and definitely pretty much in person. I don't think they've lost a region game since 2012. Ralph and Chilling, let's start with Ralph first. Yeah. What does Chandler need to do to remain unbeaten and get a fourth consecutive crown over the course of the rest of the back half of the season and the postseason? Uh, just avoid distractions. Um, one of the distractions is something like 347 penalty yards in the okay. first half. Against Desert Ridge, have you ever even heard wow. such a stat? That, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, because so, they've been over the last few years. Every now and then, a few more penalty yards than one would like, but three forty-seven. Oh crazy. yeah, that never changed. About right. it. My, from my time at Chandler until now, well, it's never literally okay. everything is different except for the fact that personal foul them, flags are wow, wow. all over the place. Wow. Okay, everything about Chandler from when I went there to now is different except for <laughs> the penalties. The penalties, and I, I mean. I did a Sports 360 AZ broadcast about a few years back where all I talked about was, was okay. like, hey, you can expect probably like eight 15-yard penalties in this wow. game. This is something. And, and that just goes to show you how talented Chandler is. Um, and it speaks to a long-standing theory that I'm not going to get into here that, like, talent matters more than discipline. Discipline is important. Discipline will keep you in games. But ultimately, like, if you're good enough to have five touchdowns get called back, you're probably good enough to score ten touchdowns. Agreed. So, Very true. Um, well, discipline is important, and they need to be more disciplined, even though they'll disagree when they hear this podcast and say we didn't deserve all those flags. Um, you got to know that they're looking at you, and you got to do a little bit more. Yeah, you have to compensate for it, even if it's not fair. Mm-hmm. Um, whether in your mind or in actuality, you have to be able to uh, weather that storm. And I think right now the only team that can stop Chandler is Chandler. I, and, I, I agree. and what they'll probably take that as the only team that can stop us wears stripes, but it's still, you know, once the penalty flag is thrown, there's nothing you can do about it. So, Correct. um, they just got to figure out how to make sure that things are cleaned up a little bit or figure out which plays they tend to get the most penalties called on that them. Sense. And, uh, and and go from there because that that was uh, that that was the 347 first half penalty yards is quite wow. a bit. And Chili, your take. Obviously, we speak about Jaheim the Jet, who we hope sees the field soon. Of course, Dede Hunter tearing it up, Nesbitt tearing it up. What are their keys to success to keep this whole thing going? Because it's uh, it's Chandler, going. Chandler just has to do what Chandler's done for the last you know few years: uh, run the ball, run the ball effectively, uh, be efficient. 
from the quarterback position. Uh, don't try to be too fancy with it. Uh, you don't. If Mikey King can throw for 500 yards a game, cool. Let him throw for 500 yards a game, but you don't have to push it. Um, mm-hmm. He doesn't. He doesn't need to prove that he's better or worse than you know any of his predecessors. You know, that's he just needs to be himself. Uh, same thing with all these running backs, all these talented running backs. Just uh, fall in line and you know. Follow what you're supposed to do. Follow those blockers, too. That right. amazing offensive line, uh, very, very well coached. Coach Chip does an amazing job over there. Has, uh, you know, put a bunch of 2,000-yard running backs on display, TJ Green and uh, Anderson and, you know, all those guys. So, I mean, this year's going to be no different. Uh, Jaheim the Jet, you know, has been grounded for, you know, the first couple of weeks of the season. He's going to come back. I believe he's probably going to come back this week, uh, maybe next week. And, um you know he'll be he'll be ready to fly again. Uh, in the meantime, Dady Hunter's did, done an amazing mm-hmm. job. Um, that's what that's what your team does. They pick up when you go down. Um, I think that Dady Hunter is very very special. Uh, Nesbit is a guy. Eli Sanders is bad. Sure. So oh, yes. I mean they're loaded in this backfield. They can oh, kill you so many different man. ways. And I, Hosea and, is going to be opening holes for all these guys. Right, Lingy Hosea. You know the transfer from Mesa. I you know I think that. Uh, what I just don't want to see happen to them is uh, too much clutter in the backfield and the attempt to try to force feed um, some players. But, okay. you know, uh, Coach Gerritsen's an amazing coach. Absolutely. He's been there forever. So I think that, you know, they know what they're doing. And, you know, just make sure that these kids see the field and sure. see it fairly, I guess. Let's say let's swing to the other side of the pendulum in the Premier Division, the Basha Bears, Chile. What do they need to do to garner some success, because I'd say the one thing, obviously, they started off well, the Gabe Friend injury is tough, and the reason why I kind of just wanted to have this little kind of premier rage and round table, they're all playing each other now. There is, outside of Bro, there is no more Red Mountains and California teams, because... Except for Chandler so, plays at Tucson. They play Tucson, but for the most part, weeks. it is, somebody's going to take L's that we root for. I mean, that, that's no doubt about that. What does Bash need to do to get back into that W column and maybe even win a game in the 6A playoffs? Um, I, I, I got I to keep it a buck. Um, I, I, I think, you know, Bash is already a lock for the playoffs, for the conference well, yeah, playoffs. The six, me, the six, me, and, me and Ralph yeah. talked about this before the La Jolla yeah. game. Win the La Jolla game, yes. they're locked yeah, for the we conference mentioned playoffs. That, yeah. so I think right now it's, you know, uh, don't get caught up on like, hey, is it possible that we still make the Open? Like, how, how competitive can we be? Like, you know, be realistic about what it is and, you know, set the table for what you're about to go into. Mm-hmm. Um, try to grab a couple wins in that conference playoff that you're going to be in, that you are assured to be in. Be as competitive as possible. I think that, the, like I said earlier, I think this Basha team can squeeze out one or two more wins based on what we saw from Clark at quarterback. I mean, this might be the short-term solution for the rest of the year. So can Clark go, you know, four and three or four and two or whatever amount of games that they got the rest of the way. I think that maybe he can because he's got the weapons. Uh, Williams, Harper, Mateen, that, that's some talent. And this offensive line, like undersized, but they work hard. I, they could block for me. I would take them on my team. Um, I'll say, I think, because, I mean, the as great as some of these players are, I mean, we just talked about a beast in Chandler. We're talking about a team that's going to be – Back, back. I think if they get consistent quarterback play, they can because they're going to be in the six A playoffs. I think their goal, obviously, is to win some regular season games. Of, of course. course, I think but, they can go two and two versus the rest of what's wow, left. That, that's I, I, that's I think, big shoes. I, that's I, I think that that's the ceiling. I think that yes. they can. I think that they can get Brophy. Um, oh, okay. They can probably be competitive with Hamilton. You know, I think they can be competitive with Hamilton. Maybe they can get their victory. Maybe they won't. Um, and based on the way, like, Perry gives up points, I do think that, you know, maybe they could scare Perry a little bit. I mean, we just watched Perry give up 500 yards to the kid from Boulder Creek. Like, this sure. is nothing new. Like, I mean, I know Perry thinks that, you know, I ride Chandler or whatever, but, you know, with three state championships and after dropping 100 points on you three consecutive years, like, I mean, yes, Chandler's very, very good. But, you know, Basham might be able to put a little scare into Perry. Um, we'll, we'll see how this works out. I'd like to see them win a playoff game, and I'd like to see them get that consistent quarterback play. Whether that actually results in Ws or not in the Premier Division, but if they can win a 6A playoff game, that would be awesome. And I think yeah. Because I think their 6A opponent 
is going to be an easier opponent than anybody they'll play in region play. Yeah. Uh, also, um, I mean, uh, they might be able to get a fifth win. Yeah. I think that um, for sure. Um, you know, th- there's a there's a little bit of a mental thing there with um, with Hamilton. I mean, there's going to be some extra pressure on Hamilton to reclaim uh-huh. each one of these like little Wings. things as, yeah. as, as, as you know as the season goes on. Um, and then there's Brophy, and I and have, from having seen Brophy in person, there's a lot of things that I really love about that team. The fact of the matter is, they don't really possess the athletes to go out and do a bunch of damage. And while their offensive line can be dominant. It's not necessarily the type of offense where they've got a quarterback that's just going to be going nuts, you know. Yeah, and so um, they're still pretty young at that position, and they like to mix it up offensively. Perhaps they get too cute. If you can, if Basha can keep a game ugly, um, then I, I think that they that they have a real shot. And you know, it's going to be tough against an explosive offense like Perry and you know Chandler's Chandler. But I, I think that. Uh, when I look at Basha, I, I think it would be a real um, boost for that entire roster to have just stuck together through Gabe Friend's injury and try to try to get a region win. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd like you go, to go yeah, into those playoffs at four and five. You know, because if they you go into the playoffs at four and six and you don't get a win in the playoffs, right? Then four and seven looks a lot like the Gerald Todd seasons, right? It does. No, you're right. That's <laughs> what those were. That's and very so, true. You know, you don't want to be in that position. And so uh, we've seen actual progress. Uh-huh. And, and, and don't get me wrong. Gerald Todd is a very good man. Yeah. And he, he was in a, kind of a tough position. Um, but you want progress to be more tactile than just, uh-huh. you know, we've seen it and we're trying to convince you. You also want right. to see it on paper. You want to see the W's. Absolutely. Yeah. The next two teams who are in the CUSD, who are in that premier division, the Hamilton Huskies and the Perry Pumas. Chili, you like to say that they are back, back. I tend to side with you. I have not gotten to see them yet. Um, what is it about them that, aside from them being 6-0, and it seems like it's the unselfishness of this team. I have, I, I have a love-hate relationship with um, some of the contributing factors to Hamilton being back, back. Okay. Hamilton being back, back, some things have changed. It is no longer the days of where players are just going one way and focusing on one position. Brendan Rice is not just a wide receiver. He's also now a defensive end. It is crazy to look at him on one side and Jeremiah Trojan on the other. Right. Um, Okay. Zach Lewis, probably Mm -hmm. their third best weapon on offense, is also their best coverage guy. Um, Wow. You know... You know, it, it was like the year when they had to put Cole Luke um, on both sides of the field, but they're doing it at so many positions, positions with so many players. Um, what's it called? Uh, one, one of their linemen, um, not Finn Lecky, they have another kid that goes both ways, and man, I forgot his name, but um, he's an absolute stud on both sides of the ball, and he's uh, very, very important. Um, Hamilton is back back, and it's just different. And that's my hate, is that they have these players going both ways because I don't think that you can win uh, the big school championship that way. I don't know if you can win the Open that way um, with all your star players going both ways. What I like about it is that it's different and mm-hmm. it's getting away from what Hamilton was. And, you know, for a long time, I resisted the Hamilton's got to change, the Hamilton's got to be different, they got to forget about the past. You know, this isn't those days. Ralph used to say that all the time. You know, after watching it, I kind of agree with it. I kind of agree with it. Back in the day, you would have never seen um, a Cole Martin probably starting at one of the most important defensive positions. Um, you wouldn't see him getting all that playing time. Now he is. Um, you probably wouldn't even see him at all because he, he was beyond a freshman. freshman. Because yeah. Because he basically... Pretty rare for a freshman to get that level. And he's not the only Garrett one. Rand? He's not the only one. Wyatt Milkovic is another one. Yeah. An absolute stud of Chandler a Chandler Davis got pulled up before he got suspended for the year. Like... It's it's crazy to like, it's different, and you know, I, I have a love hate relationship with some of it. I, I love I love the whole you know giving the freshman the opportunity thing, but you know I do hate the some of these kids are going both ways. But you know it was cool talking to Brendan Rice. I talked to Brendan Rice on the vlog. Shameless plug, uh, justchili.tv. Make sure you subscribe. Um, you know he's he's glad 
He loves playing defense. He's yeah. glad to be on the field and showcase his talent on that side. Not that he wants to be recruited as a DN. I don't know. I, I'd probably still make him a four-star DN, though, because he's pretty big. He, he can do some things. He can do some things. But... Like he just loves being out there. He loves being on. He plays special teams, and I'm not talking about kick return, punt return. I'm talking about coverage. That's good. Yeah. Coverage. So I'll ask that, you to, yeah. that he can put his pride aside, being one of the top players in the country. Put his pride aside and do some of these basic duties that you would reserve for you know reserves. So I'll ask you, Chile. Obviously, they've got four games left. You know who those games are against. Doesn't really necessarily matter the order. Is Hamilton an open team or not? Think of who they got I, I, and how it all shakes out. I expect them to get Brophy. I expect them to get Basha. Um, they got to they got to prove they can beat Perry because you know right. Perry's done this thing to them. Because and they got to prove they can beat Chandler. Now, it, two losses is two losses too many. Um, uh, that that that's a question I don't know. Could they compete with any of these uh, eight teams in the open? Oh, they can. One, yeah. we're, we're going to find out when they play Chandler. But yes. right now, I'm going to say yes. I think they could. Okay. Uh, yeah, probably. Even if they go 8-2, and two, probably they could make it at this point. Um, the, the stuff is out. I mean, so we can talk about We can talk about where we're at okay. right now. Let's I mean, it came out. It came out an hour ago. So um, on. Me, Hamilton me is on there to... now. Five, where's, all right. All right, so here, I'll get you pulled up. I'll just show it. Yes. I, I, I tweeted yes. them out, so I got them right here. So, did you go through what, the, it's weird how we're you got, talking You got to go through the AIA app, but, right, so, real quick, while you, guys are, yes. while you guys are going through this. Can I get it through here? here. I do think that, you know, okay. Hamilton um, could elevate themselves okay. high enough with a couple of these victories to oh, wow. well, afford yeah. some losses. Hamilton's three right now. They're yes. gonna. They're, everybody's gonna get a boost for having even played Chandler, so you don't have right. to worry about that. Um, it's the Perry thing. That's if they, and if, that's where it if comes they, down. If to. they lose to Perry, then they really got to start thinking about you know probably a six A conference playoffs. If they beat Perry, then they're, then they're probably going to be in. That's even. That's no matter what happens against Brophy. I think that a two loss. If the two losses are to Chandler and Brophy, I think that they're probably going to be okay. If the two losses are to Chandler and Perry, because right now Perry's not even in the top 16 of what the open uh, division initial rankings are, then that, you know, then I think that that's going to be an issue. But I, nobody has to worry about whether they take a loss to Chandler or not, right. because that's these formulas, uh, the AIA's formulas, typically reward you for playing up. Yes. And I'll say this, yes, we seems like a lot of stuff spins off of Perry. What does Perry need to do... Um, Pretty much says, I don't want to say their season comes down to Chandler, although yeah. at least on paper it seems. What does this team need to do to improve? And, I, and you touched on to something improve. that I strongly agree. It's like they've got to find somebody to step up aside from Purdy because I'll, this is... have got to find somebody on defense. Well, I'll even say over the last handful of years, ever since Perry kind of evolved, they always, and we kind of echoed this, Anytime Perry would snap the ball, they could darn near score a touchdown on every play. They had those t types of weapons. I've only seen them play the once this year, the pinnacle. And just from the scores and from what I'm gathering, they don't have that. And they could out-athlete a lot of people, but I'm not sure that's even the case. Because when we walked out of Sun Devil Stadium last year, Ralph, you posed a question to Chile and I. How long can you keep a big brother down? And a little brother down, rather. Yeah. As I was answering that question, I felt little brother Perry was going to grow up this year. I don't know if they have to the point where they can, where they're competitive with Chandler. I, honestly, I with yeah. Chandler having scored fifty-four points per game, nine and zero against Perry. Yeah. I don't see that shifting this year in regular season or if they meet in postseason. Yeah, I mean, if I'm Perry, I, I would almost get kind of gimmicky in these last four games, and I'd put eight in the box, like, against everyone always. Mm -hmm. I would crash down on everybody's running game. I mean, I, I, would, I would just get nasty on people's running games, and I'd put, I'd put my best athletes out at corner and, and let them play on an island, and if they get beat, you live with it, but you've been getting beat, 
and gashed in the running game, and that's the most demoralizing thing, especially as the season goes on. And Brophy is, you know, Brophy's probably not going to be able to beat you just on, uh, just with the passing game. Bash is probably not going to be able to beat you just with the passing game. Um, Hamilton, you know, we'll, we'll see. But you, and that's a risk that you're going to have to take with Chandler as well. You got to stop giving up. What did they give up? Like 500 total yards to Boulder Creek's running back or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it's um, it Jacob Cicernos. Gross, disgusting. Like and I. But that, that's the perious thing to do. They did this last year when they gave up all those points to who was it? Like O'Connor, O'Connor and, and, okay, 68, yeah. yeah, yeah. And we talked about that last year, but it was only on their second team, so it didn't count, right? So everything counts. So I mean. <laughs> Everything can't. So, yeah, I mean, with that, what are you going to go out and say the lost against uh, Cesar Chavez didn't count? Right. Like, no. Every, then if you have the word Perry on your jersey, you, it counts. Period. I think what I'd like to but see. But a lot of those Perry. starters didn't play against Cesar Chavez. So, like, does it really count? Like, does well, it really let's matter? look at I the mean, fact that they're, it counts when they're not in the top 16 of the initial open division rankings. I'd like to see Perry finish. And I think that's. Because you look at games like a Boulder Creek or a Sandra Day or something like that, and I think we might have even touched on it earlier. Chandler wins those type of games 55-7. Perry wins those games 55-35. And that's a big scenario when it comes down to fourth quarter type thing. Championship teams finish and other teams don't. Yeah, I mean, the last time that Chandler and Perry went, went, went head-to-head, it was with all of the stakes in the world, mm-hmm. and, and it was it, sixty-five twenty. There's a thirty-seven point. But there, yeah, there's a thirty-seven yes. point win. So, um, you know, uh, what do they have to do? They can't. They got to stop getting run on. So, I mean, it's it's just to the point where, like, I don't know. What do you do? Put it in the box. You move to a four-six. You crash everybody down. You play just goal line defense. Right. You let the other team back up against their own twenty. Like, what do you have to do in order to be able to get into the backfield against some of these teams? Correct. And I think that that should be some of the. Let another quarterback try and beat you. Your offense is good. I mm-hmm. mean, Perry's offense, Absolutely. from the offensive line to the receivers to the running backs. Like you, you might say like, oh, there's no superstars, but they're good. Like mm-hmm. they're good everywhere. Um, and so, I mean, offensively, keep doing you. Defensively, you absolutely have to do something different because it just feels like we're going into the fourth year in a row of the same exact story of a team that's going to score a bunch and then at the end of the day can't stop anybody. You still so. think that this Perry team is going to win the conference finals? Yeah. I don't. I do. Me For the same reason that – yeah, the 6 conference finals. And I don't because of the same reason that Brett was saying they can't finish. I haven't seen them finish yet. But who, like, who's going to challenge them? You know, for a six I, would, I don't see anybody. I honestly would say a Highland I mean, or a DV. I think I think we're going to see a Hamilton or a Red Mountain or a Highland or a Desert Vista yeah, squeezed out. DV. Right. I, I don't know if they could beat any of those teams. Correct. Yeah, that I, I'm with you on that. I, I yeah, feel I guess at the. I mean, but they did finish against Red. Well, Red Mountain finished themselves. themselves. But like I. <sighs> well, I mean, they're just going to see those teams like again. Now they're going to see Red Mountain again. Yeah. Correct. I, in in in. Chubba Purdy, I, I trust. Place my faith. Okay. Absolutely. In the conference playoffs. Yeah, I told you they were never going to make second, the open. I told you they would never, no, under any right. circumstances, would they make the open. Against I, the best of the rest. I, they will be the 6A conference champion. Wow. I, okay. I, I, I believe that for Bet five the house months now. I, I would, I've been saying it as loud as I possibly could for like five months, and so yeah, I got to no, stick no. with it. That's, uh, I just said that it would own a house in Maricopa. <laughs> yeah, you house. haven't even driven out there I've yet. So I, 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 I can, yes. I can probably depend on being able to stay out there, even if you win. But <laughs> so here, I, but the team that I said that they would meet, the team I said that they would meet in the six A conference finals, does not look like the, that will be the team, and that was Desert Ridge. And so okay. I, I thought that it would be, I thought it would be Perry and Desert Ridge there at the end, and I, I think you're probably right. It's probably going to be a Red Mountain or a Highland. Yes, that's. Uh... Good stuff. Well, fellas, I'm glad we were able to break down this premier uh, premier region. It's, uh, we spend a lot of time Real. talking about that. Yeah. How did how did this region get the name premier? I feel like that's so like oh, condescending to every yeah, yeah, region. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, everything else is a is a re- Santan, a central. Uh, yeah. But as Chile uh, would say, Kino where's Valley. where's the lie? No, it, it, it is premier. No, there isn't. Sure. But it's so it's, it's like, ironic that it's. Uh, 
And it has been the best region and for, for many, many years. We cover 80% of the teams in the Premier Region. And they should change. Half of our podcast is dedicated to the Premier teams. Yeah, they should change the the uh, the 5A uh, one that Castile's in, though. The Santan? Let's call it the, like, Yikes or something like that. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Oh, that's Speaking awesome. of the word yikes, well, hopefully nobody was offended by this podcast, but yikes, <laughs> we're out. It's not